Good morning and welcome to another online church service. So glad you're joining in today and really do hope and pray that you would connect with God. You would hear His voice. You would feel His message spoken to you today. Today is the fourth and final week of our sermon series looking at the life of Nehemiah. The series is called The Good Work. And today's reading comes from Nehemiah chapter 6. And we are reading verses 1 to 16. When word came to Sanballat, Tobiah, Geshem the Arab, and the rest of our enemies, that I had built the wall and not a gap was left in it, though up to that time I had not set the doors and the gates, Sanballat and Geshem sent me this message. Come, let us meet together in one of the villages on the plain of Ono. But they were scheming to harm me, so I sent messengers to them with this reply. I am carrying on a great project and cannot go down. Why should the work stop while I leave it and go down to you? Four times they sent me the same message, and each time I gave them the same answer. Then the fifth time, Sanballat sent his aid to me with the same message, and in his hand was an unsealed letter in which was written. It is reported among the nations, and Geshem says it's true, that you and the Jews are plotting to revolt, and therefore you are building the wall. Moreover, according to these reports, you are about to become their king, and have even appointed prophets to make this proclamation about you in Jerusalem. There is a king in Judah. Now this report will get back to the king, so come, let us meet together. I sent him this reply, Nothing like what you are saying is happening. You are making it up out of your head. They were all trying to frighten us, thinking their hands will get too weak for the work and it will not be completed. But I prayed, now strengthen my hands. One day I went to the house of Shemaiah, son of Deliah, and the son of Mehetabah, who was shut up in his home. He said, let us meet in the house of God inside the temple, and let us close the temple doors because men are coming to kill you. By night they are coming to kill you. But I said, should a man like me run away? Or should someone like me go into the temple to save his life? I will not go. I realized that God had not sent him, but that he had prophesied against me because Tobiah and Sanballat had hired him. He had been hired to intimidate me, so I would commit a sin by doing this, and then they would give me a bad name to discredit me. Remember Tobiah and Sanballat, my God, because of what they have done. Remember also the prophet Noadiah and how she and the rest of the prophets have been trying to intimidate me. So the wall was completed on the 25th of Elul in 52 days. When all our enemies heard about this, all the surrounding nations were afraid and lost their self-confidence because they realized that this work had been done with the help of our God. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God for his word. So the title of our week four message is Shut the Door on Distractions. In this series on Nehemiah, we have looked at how he felt the pain and the anguish of his people in the homeland. How he left Persia to go and start this rebuilding project. We know how he knelt down to pray and how he stood up to act. We also saw how he dealt with opposition. And today we're going to see how he completed the task by shutting the door on distractions. Now, I may not know you, but I do know this about you, listening to this message. That God has called you to do something for him. That you are not created to be on this earth by some kind of accident. God knew what he was doing when he formed you in your mother's womb. You are fearfully and wonderfully made made to do something special, made to do some good work that God has called you to do. We know this because the same was true for Nehemiah. He was a cupbearer, a servant or a butler for the king of Persia. When he heard that his homeland was in a shambles, he rushed home to do something about it. He realized that his people were hopeless and were vulnerable and that someone had to do something. So he asks permission to leave Persia. He travels 1,500 kilometers 
He has a clear vision and a plan from God. He inspires people to believe. And with God's help, he starts rebuilding. He starts and there is huge and tremendous progress. But as we all know, when something good for God starts happening, opposition shows up. As the work goes down, opposition heats up. There are these enemies who are against what he wants to do. The enemies of Nehemiah are Sanballat, Tobiah, and Geshem. And they will do anything and everything to distract Nehemiah from completing his goal. It's a good point. That if your enemy cannot destroy you, he will distract you. So how do we learn to shut the door on distraction? In verse 1 and 2 of our reading from Nehemiah 6, we hear this. Sanballat, Tobiah, and Geshem the Arab, and the rest of our enemies found out that I had finished rebuilding the wall, and that no gaps remained, though we had not yet set up the doors and the gates. So Sanballat and Geshem sent a message asking me to meet them at one of the villages in the plain of Ono. The enemies of Nehemiah sent him a message saying, Why don't you stop your building project and come and meet with us? We want to meet with you to talk about things. Now, here's a great tip for any of you listening. Is that if your enemy ever calls you to meet at a place called Oh No, it's probably not a good idea. Nehemiah doesn't go to meet them. And I reckon that's pretty different from what you and I might do today. You know, we might say in a situation when our enemies are asking to meet with us, wow, this is a, a great opportunity to convert my critics. Or this could be a chance to expand my influence. Let me influence more people to do my work. Some of us might see this as, well, this is a good opportunity for me to where I can build my brand, get my message out there. Maybe make more money or have more influence in society around me. But Nehemiah says no. Perhaps the principle is true that what we call an opportunity, God calls a distraction. Something that is trying to divert our attention on God. Something that is trying to divert our faith. And I think we all know that in today's world, in today's age, it has never been easier to be distracted than now. When we are bombarded on all sides, there are distractions everywhere. Everywhere we look, there is something craving our attention or our input. It has never been easier to be distracted. And perhaps this generation, the generation we live in, has never been greater at doing things that really don't matter. If the devil can't destroy you, he'll get real good at distracting you from fulfilling your calling from God. The enemies ask Nehemiah to come and meet with them. He rejects their message. He keeps building the wall. The strategic skill that Nehemiah shows is being able to say no. Now, all of us struggle with saying no to others. How often do you find yourself roped into doing something that you don't really want to do? How often do you agree to go somewhere or be part of something that you didn't really intend to, but you couldn't quite say no? We all need to learn the power of saying, no, I'm not doing that. We don't say maybe and mean no. We need to say no, nothing more. The real lesson in this is that even Jesus said no on occasions. There were times where there were crowds of people waiting in long lines, desperate to see him for some teaching or for some healing or for some miracle. And with that line stretching into the distance, Jesus would just walk away. He would go and spend time with his father in prayer. He would say no to the crowd so he could say yes to his father. He was strategic about when he said no, when he needed to replenish, when he needed to grow again in his faith. He said no to the crowd to say yes to God. And if Jesus does it, perhaps we can do it too. 
No, it doesn't mean that you don't care. It means that because you care, you are saying no so that you can spend your energy and your time wisely. If you are always available to everyone, eventually you'll have nothing to give anymore. Nehemiah is good at saying no. Four times there is the same exact message sent to Nehemiah. Stop rebuilding, let's talk, let's meet. In verse 5 and 6, we hear Nehemiah doing this. The fifth time, Sanballat's servant came with an open letter in his hand. And this is what it said. There is a rumor around, among the surrounding nations. And Geshem tells me it's true that you and the Jews are planning to rebel. And that is why you are building the wall. According to his reports, you plan to be their king. There is a rumor. There is some town gossip going around. They try and use the ploy of saying that there are rumors about Nehemiah in an attempt to distract him from his work. There's a rumor. People are talking about you. People aren't happy with what's going on in your life. There are comments being made about the decisions that you have taken. There's a rumor. We've all been at the wrong end of that talk of the town. Don't let the whispers of the people distract you from God's calling. You will never do big things if you get distracted or waylaid by small-minded people. You don't have to live your life according to someone else's opinion of you. You mustn't let what they think or what they say disrupt God's calling for you. Don't worry about what people say about you. Worry about what's true about you. In Nehemiah 6 verse 8, Nehemiah replies, he says, there's no truth in any part of your story. You are making up the whole thing. Nehemiah says, it doesn't matter what they say about me. I'm not trying to be king. I'm not trying to rebel against the other nations. That simply isn't true. And then what makes Nehemiah great is that instead of letting that discourage him, it actually makes him more determined. In verse 9 he says, they were just trying to intimidate us imagining that they could discourage us and stop the work. So I continued the work with even greater determination. Nehemiah didn't give in to the distraction. In fact, he knuckled down even more. He says, I will continue. I will keep going. I don't want to be distracted. He keeps working. And if you keep reading the message of Nehemiah, you find that at some stage they are working with a, a hammer and a chisel in one hand and a sword or a weapon in the other. They are working and they are defending their city at the same time. They are determined. They are not distracted. As the wall goes up, they work even harder. You know, it is a principle in life that once the wall starts going up, once there starts to be fruit to your calling with God. Once God starts to bless what you are doing, once you take that step of faith and start making progress, start making a difference, that's when things come against you. We mustn't let our external successes cause internal damage. The biggest mistake that we can make is to be distracted by an entitled spirit. You know, Nehemiah could have st stood back and said, Maybe I should go meet with those people because I am amazing. Look at what I've been able to do that no one else could do. I am Nehemiah, the rebuilder of Jerusalem. I am Nehemiah, the inspirer of people. He could have been distracted by his own entitled spirit. By believing it's because of me that all of this is working. Or because of the price that I've paid, the decisions I have made. I'm entitled to some perks. I deserve it. I have earned it. Nehemiah doesn't give in to the entitled spirit. Later on in the story, someone else comes to him to try and distract him. He says, Nehemiah, let's go for a meeting. But you know what? Let's meet in the temple, behind closed doors. Because there are people who are trying to kill you and there you will be safe. The guy essentially says, I'm your buddy, Nehemiah. I'm on your side. I know they're coming tonight, so let's go hide away and keep you safe. Nehemiah refuses again. He doesn't want to use his authority or his position 
to use the temple to be safe. That would be an abuse of power. In verse 11 and 12 and 13, Nehemiah says, Should someone in my position run from danger? Should someone in my position enter the temple to save his life? No, I won't do it. I realized that God had not spoken to him, but he had uttered this prophecy against me because Tobiah and Sanballat had hired him. In other words, this buddy of Nehemiah's was a traitor. They were hoping to intimidate me and make me sin. Then they would be able to accuse and discredit me. Nehemiah says, no, I'm not going to hide out in the temple. I'm not going to take special privileges for myself. I'm not going to lead with an entitled heart. He says no to everything else so that he can keep saying yes to God. But you know, Nehemiah's enemies, Sanballat and Tobiah and Geshem, they taunt him, they threaten him, they discourage him, they scare him, they distract him. But Nehemiah knows that what he's doing is right. So he won't give in. He won't take his focus off God. He won't stop doing the good work. We have Nehemiah's great guiding principle in chapter 6 verse 3. It says, I sent messengers to them saying, I am doing a great work and I cannot come down. Why should the work stop when I leave and come down to you? Nehemiah says, I'm not getting down off this wall. I'm not stopping the work God has called me to do. What I'm doing is important and great stuff. Nothing else matters but me doing what God has called me to do. Now I was essentially saying, you know what, I'm not trying to do something that's impressive or that makes me look good. I'm called to do something that's important. You're saying, I'm not trying to do what makes me popular with other people. I'm just trying to live out my purpose. So I'm not coming down from that wall. I'm not backing off. I'm not taking my eyes off the prize. I know I'm doing a great work. Maybe you who are listening to this today need to be reminded that what you are doing for God is great work. If you are trying your best to be a good parent of your small child, despite the fact that it is hard and difficult and you are tired and exhausted all the time, Don't get down from that wall that you are building. You are doing a great work. And for you who are striving to treat people well, to act with justice, to be kind, in a world that is so mean, in a world where everyone else wants to do something else, don't get off that wall. Keep on fulfilling your purpose. You be kind. You be generous. You live with justice because that's what God has called you to do. In your place of work, when you are tempted to stoop down to their level, to do things the way they do, to be mean and nasty, to not work to the best of your ability. Don't give in to that temptation. Don't be distracted by the comments or the cattiness. You stay on that wall and you keep doing what God has called you to do, to work with all your heart for God. See, that's what this series has always been about, that you are doing your call. God has called you to do something in this life. And it is a great work. Don't give up. If that great work is loving someone into the kingdom of God, you keep loving them and praying for them. If that great work is helping the poor and the needy, then you keep helping them. If it is campaigning for some justice, then you do that campaign. If it is starting a project or a mission or standing up in faith to take on a new role in God's kingdom, then you do it. There will always be voices of distraction, voices of discouragement, spiritual opposition. But you're doing a great work. You can't stop. You can't be distracted now. And you know, this passage ends off with this great kind of closing off message. It says in verse 15, So on October the 2nd, the wall was finished. Just 52 days after we had begun the work. In 52 days, the once insurmountable task of protecting the city of Jerusalem has been completed. It is not some supernatural miracle that God just built the wall overnight. He used human beings, everyday people like me and you. But God's people, working according to God's plan, for God's purposes were able to do the impossible. 
believing people and God is always enough. Nehemiah was just an ordinary person like me or like you, but he had a vision from God. He had the help of his God and he did it. There is good work in this world for all of us to do. There is something great that God wants you to do with your life. And you will never finish what you don't start. So jump all in. Listen to the voice of God. Let your heart be broken by the things that break God's heart. Stand up and be ready to act. Inspire people to join you on your journey. Don't be distracted by opposition or by naysayers. Finish the good work that God has given you. And that is a life worth living. Amen. And so we pray, Lord, that you would bless all the good work that will come from our collective lives. We ask that you would give us insight, but also courage to know what it is you want us to do and then to be able to start it and to do it. We pray, Lord, that you would keep us from being distracted by spiritual opposition or by distractions of naysayers. We pray, Lord, that we would keep our focus on you and not climb off the wall until the work is done. Lord, what we really want is our lives to matter and make some difference in this world. So lead us and guide us. We are your children and we want to serve you. We ask for your help and your presence to guide us. In Jesus' name. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen.